From a distance, these sparkling waters of the California coast look like a beautiful but desolate landscape. However, plunging beneath the rolling waves will prove otherwise and reveal a thriving ecosystem full of life. Today, I'm exploring the kelp forests of La Jolla Cove in San Diego. Kelp is not actually a plant, but like a plant, it gets energy from the sun. Kelp, along with other seaweeds, create kelp forests, a unique environment that provides for an assortment of different organisms. Kelp forests, like the forests above the surface, support an incredible diversity of species and provide me with the perfect opportunity to film them, for kelp forests attract a plethora of passing migrants from the depths from cabezones, a type of spiny kelp fish, to shoals of mackerels. These mackerel shoals, as well as schools of surf perch and other fish, take refuge in the kelp and seagrass and feed on sponges and algae growing on rocks. These schools, however, do not go unnoticed by predators. Sea lions encircle the school, waiting to pick up stragglers on the outside of the shoal. Sea lions, however, are not the only ones after the surf perch. Pacific white-sided dolphins, too, are drawn in by the lure of prey and begin to make their way to the kelp forests. These dolphins use the power of teamwork, along with echolocation, to hunt down the surf perch. Some fish, such as kelp bass, are permanent residents of the kelp forest and never linger outside protection of the kelp and seagrass. Kelp bass eat small invertebrates hiding in the kelp and have calico spots in order to camouflage with the pattern reeds of kelp and seagrass. Some fish, however, do not mind standing out. Garibaldi, the state marine fish of California, impress mates with their bright orange colors. These fish are very aggressive towards other Garibaldi, so are generally solitary and spend most of their time navigating the seagrass beds that grace La Jolla. Garibaldi do, however, coalesce in feeding frenzies to prey on microscopic plankton. I was in the middle of one of these frenzies and saw over 20 Garibaldi surrounding me. As you move into deeper water, the beds of seagrass are replaced with sandy flats. These flats provide no protection from predators, so many fish travel in groups for safety. These fish must withstand the battering current that rips through the flats. For this reason, these sandy flats are home to different fish than the kelp forests, such as sand dabs. This small relative of the flounder is almost invisible when completely flat, but must reveal itself when hunting and if detected by a predator. Deeper still lies pockets of submerged dead kelp of larger fish. And in these pockets of kelp lies a bizarre and potentially dangerous fish, the round stingray. These strange fish glide across the sea floor in search of their food, aquatic invertebrates. Round rays are venomous and can send you to a hospital if you are stung. However, as a snorkeler, you have nothing to fear. Most things happen when the waiting beachgoer accidentally steps on one. As long as you give stingrays their space, you'll be just fine. So next time you are gazing at the rolling waves of the sea, feeling the sharp wind floating upward and smelling the wisps of salt in the air spraying from the ocean, think about the world below the surface, the kelp forests. The kelp forests are an aquatic community full of unique characters specially suited for this life. We humans are simply visitors to this realm and must treat it with respect so it can flourish for years to come.